Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. So, I've got a question for everybody. When the Jews go and they are praying at the Wailing Wall, is the Wailing Wall really part of the temple that they want to rebuild? Well, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 24. What does Jesus have to say? Now, Matthew 24 is one of those chapters where it talks about the end times. So let's read Matthew 24, starting in verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. So here it is. Jesus is leaving the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. So they're saying, wow, look at all these great buildings of this temple. I mean, let's face it. King Herod spent a lot of money building the temple. Uh, you know, King Herod, you know, the family that killed all the children in Bethlehem trying to kill Christ. Uh, it's the same family. And you better believe he didn't spend the money on the temple to, to glorify and worship God, but rather the, to control the people through religion. Sounds like uh, a lot of TV preachers, doesn't it? All right, so... And Jesus went out, departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Huh? Jesus said, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, Verily means truly, Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Huh? And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And if you want to read, you can keep reading on your own. But the, the point I'm making here is, Jesus said, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, in 70 AD, the Jews rebelled against Rome. And... General Titus was one of the, uh, I believe it was two Roman generals. But General Titus was one of them. He was a son of the emperor of Rome, the uh, Caesar, as you will. Now, there was at least two Roman legions, which is basically like a U.S. Army division. And they went in and crushed the rebellion, killing many. Some... Historians say that up to a million Jews died at Masada. I don't know if you could fit a million Jews in Masada. Uh, but they, they rebelled because they didn't want Rome. And Rome was cruel, people. Let's face it. Rome was... Uh, all the bad things you heard about uh, the Roman Empire, it's probably true times ten. All right, now, the point I'm trying to make here is that Jesus said there would not be one stone upon another that would not be thrown down in the temple. And we're going to go back to that because it's a very important point. Now, let's take a look at the John chapter 19, verse 1. Uh, the Jews have taken Jesus, not all the Jews, obviously, but the chief priests, uh, the leaders, the rabbis, the top, some of the top people, not all of them. And when you read the word Pharisee, you have to understand a Pharisee is a Jew. 
Well, there were two major denominations of the Jews. You had the Pharisees, and then you had the Sadducees. And the Sadducees were generally the temple priests, whereas the Pharisees were considered the scholars. Uh, their book is called the Babylonian Talmud. It comes from Babylon. That's spelled T-A-L-M-U-D. And basically, Talmud means learning. So when you call it the Babylonian Talmud, you're talking about Babylonian learning, learning from Babylon. Think about that the next time you hear about Mystery Babylon the Great. Matter of fact, uh, look up uh, the Babylonian Talmud. It has a, it's, what it basically is, is it's a commentary on the law and from many, many, many different rabbis. And uh, it's, all, it's often said that if you ask two rabbis their opinions, uh, you'll get three answers. All right, let's go to John 19. Oh, and the Jews also have a book that's called the Kabbalah, K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H. Check that out if you want to learn what, uh, they, what they really believe. All right, John chapter 19. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And this, uh, uh, so this is, this is where they're getting ready to crucify Christ. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. Purple's the color of royalty, right? Verse 3. And said, Hail, King of the Jews. Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Who's Pilate talking to? The Jews. Pilate, who is the Roman governor, is speaking to the Jews concerning Jesus. And he says, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests, now these are not Catholic priests, these are the Jewish priests. When the chief priests, therefore, an officer saw him, saw who? Christ. They cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him. I mean, it's pretty obvious who Pilate's talking to here. Maybe we should read that again. When the chief priests, therefore, an officer saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and by our law, he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. You know, even Pilate was, was you know, uh, considering the things that Jesus said. And let me tell you something, people. When you are a governor of an area and you've got thousands and thousands of people following Jesus, you're going to send spies to follow Jesus and hear what he's saying. I mean, is this guy plotting a revolution against Rome and myself? What's this guy doing? I need to know. He's got thousands of followers. I mean, Jesus had 5,000 uh, men that were following him at one time. You know, you want to know what's going on. So, you know, you better believe Pilate had sent people to keep an eye on Jesus. We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. You know what, people? You better know that Pilate heard of all the miracles that Jesus performed. You know, was he just some magician? 
or is he the son of God? When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid and went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have the power to crucify thee and power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Think about it, people. Who delivered Jesus unto Pilate? The chief priests, the Jews. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. So did Rome crucify Jesus or did the Jews? Let's read the next verse. What's the next verse? Ja uh, verse 12. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. Oh, we, haven't you always been told in church, oh, it was the Romans that crucified Jesus. Well, I believe the King James Bible. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, if thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. What's Caesar? He's the king, the emperor of Rome. If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. In other words, you let this guy go, and we're going to charge you with treason against Rome. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now, why would they tell you that it's called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha? Because the New Testament was written in Greek, that's why it's called the pavement. But in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. You see, if it was called Gabbatha, translated into Greek, it would have said, and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called Gabbatha, but in the Greek, the pavement. But that's not what it says. The New Testament was in Greek, people, not Hebrew. That's why it says, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. That is why, so people know that when they're reading Greek, it's telling you what the word was in Hebrew because it was translated, the, the, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, not translated. It was originally written in Greek, the New Testament. He brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour. And he, Pilate, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they, who's they? The Jews. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests, the Jews, the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Huh. So when they're getting ready to crucify Christ, when they want Christ crucified, the Jews, the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Interesting. But yet in 70 AD, about, oh, I don't know, approximately 35 years later, the Jews rebelled against Rome. 70 AD, the Roman legions, the Roman army came in, 
and crushed the rebellion, killing many. And according to history, the Roman soldiers, now they did this against orders. They set fire to the temple and burned it. Now there's a lot of flammable things in the temple. You had all these wall coverings, you had curtains, furnit wooden furniture. You had a lot of things in the temple that were flammable. Somebody or somehow the temple caught fire and there was a lot of gold in the temple. Now we're getting to the punchline here. There was a lot of gold in the temple. Well, the temple got hot, the gold melted and went into the cracks in between the, the stones of the, te the temple. You know, you've got this, this floor of stone and there's cracks in between the stone. Haven't you ever seen a, uh, a sidewalk? It's got expansion joints and cracks. Well, what happens when the gold melts and turns into a liquid? It's like a drain. It goes down in between the cracks of this, uh, these stones. And it's not just the floor. So what did the Roman soldiers do after all the carnage was over? They tore the temple apart, stone by stone, and they scraped the gold off all the stones. They completely demolished the temple, according to history. And that is why, when Jesus said in Matthew 24, that uh, there would be no stone that would not be left upon another. Matter of fact, let's read that again real quick. Matthew 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus saith unto them, See not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now you know why the Romans totally took every stone that was upon another and threw it down. They scraped all the gold from the stones and discarded them. And the temple was totally destroyed. So, we got a question. Is the Wailing Wall part of the temple? And the Jews are right? Or is Jesus a false prophet and a liar? I ask you. I already have my uh, beliefs. But what do you think? Is Jesus a false prophet like the Jews say? Uh, you see, Jesus, uh, the Jews do believe Jesus is a prophet. They believe he's a false prophet. The Muslims actually believe, believe it or not, the Muslims believe that Jesus is a true prophet. Of course, they believe he's a lesser prophet than Muhammad. They teach that Muhammad was a greater prophet than Jesus. I reject that. But at least they at least the Muslims honor Jesus as a sinless prophet. But the Jews totally reject Jesus as a false prophet. So, I got a question. And how you tell the Lord, how you answer it, might make a difference between your eternal destiny. Is Jesus a liar? Or is the Wailing Wall part of the temple, as the Jews have told us? Paul answers, Paul makes a statement in Romans chapter 3 and verse 4. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. And that's me. That's everybody. Every man a liar. So is Jesus Christ just a mere man? Or was he the Son of God, like
like the Jews accused him of. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. All right, in the book of 1 John chapter 2, starting in verse 22. 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is a liar? Question, who is a liar? Now here's the answer. But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. And that's just the Greek rendering of the word Messiah. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So, is the Wailing Wall part of the temple? And is Jesus a liar? Or is Jesus true when he said that not one stone upon another would be left. They'd all be cast down. You decide. Are you a follower of Jesus? Or are you an antichrist? And do you want to go make a trip to the Wailing Wall and make your prayers? This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Um, just a note. I've been trying to get on that real R-E-A-L dot video, V-I-D-E-O. Haven't had any luck. Maybe the Lord doesn't want me there. But I am on minds.com, M-I-N-D-S dot com. And I'm also on bitshoot, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. So if I get booted off YouTube, like everybody else is getting booted off, well, you can look for me there. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, and that's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen.